Street Fighter returns to Fight Night, February the 24th, only on ESGN TV. When I'm not out getting laid all the time, I'm watching ESGN TV. Every night is Fight Night. <laughs> ah, shit. Is it? Mother is it? ESGN TV changes lot. Lock on. Welcome back to Fight Night. The Ace Match format's really exciting because we're kind of doing it MOBA style where you get bands and you have to suddenly make your deck and everyone plays together. I think that it's a lot better than the way we did it before because before it would just be like, okay, well, Strife Crow against Nimsh, basically, that's that's all it was, and because Nimsh had performed so well and Strife Crow had performed so well, but here the whole team gets to work together on that ace match, and especially if it's 2-2, it's really going to show which team's better. Second game's getting started up here. Looks like they're going with the Paladin. Oh, and they keep the use, which is a, a nice response to a potential Eagle Horn bow. And there's the Eagle Horn bow. That is a pretty stellar hand from the Hunter, but I believe as a Hunter you want to go first. I think that uh, the yep. one drops are a little bit stronger when you go first. Agree there. And uh, speaking of one drops, we have the Leopard Gnome making second cameo. Now, do you coin out the Abusive Sergeant, or do you save it? I think you save it, just because you don't want to use the coin right now. Fair enough. But, um... You, you may have to, uh... Kill that one on the weapon. No, oh, but then, uh, then that's when the ooze comes out. Yeah. Or we've seen Monk use it before to clear the board with the doggies. This is this is a pretty challenging play right now. We might see the double one drop, or we might see the weapon. I think those are the two options right now. Hey, and I think uh, I think they are considering the weapon in this regard. But would it be weapon face? It would be weapon face. I, I will admit I, I haven't had much time to play the new hunter so much, so I don't know the judgment between when do you actually start trading and when do you just roll. But instead, it looks like they're going to go for zero ability, with max damage right away. Well, that's pretty good. You kind know, of a bit low, but I don't really know if you can finish him off very well. The Paladin does have some heals in the deck, while he doesn't have it in hand. Oh, well, we'll have to see. So these 1-1 guys are also becoming MVPs because you can keep cards in your hand for things like uh, the Twilight Mountain Drake. Giants and Twilight Drake. Yeah, certainly. An Arcane Golem. Now, I know you told me that Arcane Golem on 3 normally is pretty terrible. Is, is it pretty terrible? It's still pretty terrible in this book. Yeah. Okay. So then, uh... Oh. No. Doesn't matter. <laughs> to the Put face. that guy out there. Why not? And uh, now their opponent is starting with five mana, but still a little bit of an awkward mana up here, because I think they were really planning on putting a Twilight Drake out anyways. Mm -hmm. So in that regards, for this turn, at least, things are okay. Well, it's interesting, like, how do you deal with the 4-2 right now? I mean, you can burn equality, that's pretty wasteful. If you do anything mm -hmm. to deal with it directly, you can't drake, and you really want a drake. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you could peacekeeper it. Yeah, and then put it made out. Yeah. I don't think like that's I, the worst option. Uh, man. I feel like the one drops tend to be exhausted by this point. I don't know if the dude really has much value. I think uh, Pagel might be uh, slightly better. But uh, you, you really do have to draw into that healing. You are on a clock until you draw it. That's true, and it also gives it another solid body if you have something like an Argus come up too. Mm -hmm. Oh man. This is getting rough right now. Like doggy house rough. <laughs> <laughs> they don't really have uh, some of the winning combo cards in their hand, but... Well, they have some of them. They, uh, oh, they have Unleashed Hounds. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. I thought they were. Uh, I read. I thought that was uh, like a, another Timberwolf or something like that. Yeah, with Hunter's Mark and Unleash. Yeah, that's you're... great. Yeah, I mean, you get a big taunt creature, and it just absolutely doesn't matter. And uh, they even have Kill Command to potentially finish it off as well. Mm -hmm. And so that's just uh, 
five, seven, or five, eight, a, ten damage that can potentially come out in one turn burst. And, I think uh, the hero ability is fair here because yeah. you can't hero ability and use the weapon at the same time. Hmm. And then you just save the rest of the cards. Yeah. You you like you get all these small cards, but you want to play the small cards while using your hero ability as much as possible. Turn number six. Still not uh, that great of a position here for liquid value. They still have to deal with the fact that uh, more I can come believe in. that if he plays two creatures, he might be dead. Mm. Eight. Yes. Right, because oh. uh, the unleash the hounds. No, you can't. You can't use the. Oh, you can use the hero ping. Yeah, if he plays two creatures, and he doesn't taunt them up, he loses, and he has no way to taunt. He has no way to heal. So. Um, so the only. I mean, I look at that hand. I see two creatures coming up. Yeah, you're tempted to play Twilight and either Hero Power or. I'd, Pagel probably, or I'd probably play the giant, but uh, this is bad. This is really bad. No heals either in their hand. Yeah. I mean, I guess you take out the 4 2. So I guess you only have three creatures. So I guess you survive, but we know what's in the hand. And if you don't draw the taunt, if you don't draw the heal, uh, you're pretty much done. Well, there you go. You're going to trade instead and drop the minion and oh, only two very, minions. Very smart there. Yeah, very, very key play. And we know player, uh, I think Strife Crow is the one hitting the mouse, so I think. Oh my. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, the Arcane Golem can smash it all the way through. And Hunter's got so much health to play with. He's still got a few turns where he can make this really happen. Mm -hmm. And he can do five direct, get him to eight. Oh. And uh, at that point, they the, <laughs> the Liquid Value guys need a Taunt or a Heal. Yeah, they can do five here. And the next turn, they have Kill Command and Unleash the Hounds with the Timberwolf combo and a Hunter's Mark that they need to get burst through a taunt. So right. I feel like all the pieces are set. There's not enough mana for even things like a lay on hands. Well, they can uh, True Silver and Ooze, and that's really the best that they can do. But uh, I believe they're still dead here. Oof. Because with three creatures, three doggies is six. The kill command is five. That's 11. I mean, they do set up a potential win condition if they couldn't finish, but oh my goodness, double kill command. Uh, it's just too much. It doesn't really it doesn't matter. Really matter. No. The three, the three oh, one yes. charges, that's like the triple bluegill, man. <laughs> uh, wow, there it is. And Team Doggy House will jump out to a 2-0 lead extremely quickly. Doggy dominance, man. these hunters and uh, the paladin first pick not working out in favor of liquid value they wanted the pally because they're familiar with it but yeah you really have to you really have to give uh dog has the credit of picking hunter and warrior where you know you're picking maybe not the strongest class but really up there and it's only real primary counter at the same time and uh, you know all right, well, there you go. Team Doggy House jumps out to a 2-0 lead just as quick as they unleash the hounds. Yep. Uh, well, the other team, the uh, Liquid guys, they got to bring in the mage. And uh, it's difficult to say how they're going to build the deck and how it's going to play out. Hunter uh, has been showing some pretty good dominance. Pretty good dominance and good strategy overall from Doggy House. Liquid Value has one chance left to bring it around. What's going to happen? We'll find out right after this break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for more Fight Night. Street Fighter returns to Fight Nights, February the 24th, only on ESGN TV. Tune in to Fight Night, because if you don't, you're f***ing up. For you, you're just watching the show. For me, every night is Fight Night. Yeah. Tonight is Fight Night. The best gamers is from Singapore. Fight Night. <laughs> Fight Night, February the 24th, only on ESGN TV. Ready? What's up, bitches? I'm Tasteless, and this is ESGN TV. Hi, my name is Al Yoon. I'm better than you at Street Fighter. <laughs> That's good. Every day is fight night. Literally. Fight night. My body is ready. Welcome back to fight night. 
All right, it's time for Liquid Value to show what they got with the mage. What's it gonna be? Is it gonna be Trump's mage? Is it gonna be old throwback mage? We're about to find out. Yeah, all smiles for Team Doggy House. They have to be pretty happy with their performance so far. That for Hunter sure. deck is, is really working out for them. I think it's a great statement as well to show that, you know, as a team, they still have really collective good ideas, even though individually they might have struggled in their personal series. And I think they've played their hunter deck with with no mistakes, and it's a very easy deck to mess up sometimes and just get they let things get out of control. Yeah, and just lose. Well, that describes what we're about to see. Mm, man, Giants Mage against this deck. Oh man, I I kind of feel a bit sorry for. Uh, <laughs> oh like no, value. that's why they weren't smiling at all. Yeah, between games, they don't really have good options. Yeah, the, the problem with this deck is sometimes you just get rushed down a bit too hard. Uh, I mean, what can you really expect to do with a Doomsayer if <laughs> the creatures have already attacked once when you freeze them? <laughs> yeah, mission accomplished. Yeah, the Ice Block's not really going to do that much as when you trigger it, you can probably trigger it, you know, another one or right. kill them with a ping the following turn. Not a great starting hand either with Sylvanas and Ragnaros. I think well, the, the Molten Giant about. is is not bad though. That is a bit of a saving saving card. Two trackings is pretty nice. They can get an Eagle or a Bow. Tracking is uh, pretty interesting here because they don't exactly know which mage they're up against. Mm -hmm. So like you know, how do you know the best card to pick? Do they also have a flare in this Hunter deck? Uh, I believe they do. And if they flare out the Ice Block, it's going to be a pretty crushing end. So uh, and that's another thing that they wanted to avoid having uh, the mage right. deck. In fact, the history of this mage deck is that um, it became really popular right after they took out the old Unleash the Hounds, mm -hmm. which uh, made all your beasts, you know, buffed and charged up. And uh, because of that, hunters were pretty much destroyed and you couldn't run a hunter just to flare out the ice block. But now with hunters being dominant, if you're also running flare, <laughs> you're going to have ice many on problems. Yeah, for sure. Cherry on top and, and the, the huffer. huffer on the board. <laughs> oh boy. Excellent start for a doggy house to be able to get that out. Now, we saw a ping instead of a Doomsayer play. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because they feel like if the Doomsayer went out, that Liquid Valley, or Doghouse rather, would just let it die and just shoot instead of the hero right, powers. Right. Some people would be like, why didn't they anticipate that? Well, I think playing the Doomsayer would have been very foolish. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Now, they'd pick up a forward card in Sun Fury Protector once again, but. Their hand is so slow that it feels like development of anything is really tough to get. I think that Doomsayer here isn't too bad. I mean, at the very worst, you're gaining seven life. Right, just have it even a little bit more sometimes because it's overkill. Yeah. And I, I don't really see anything else because trying to ping is essentially a, a waste of turn uh, on any of the creatures. The thing is, if he, if he can't kill it, or if he doesn't want to kill it, he still gets two attacks with Huffer. Eight damage is, is just a crazy amount. Can, can you even you kill? Oh, we can silence, silence it. Oh, oh man. that's pretty vicious. Well, they're gonna track him first, see what they get. Maybe well, leave I believe that they're planning on silencing, but they want to see if uh, they have some more. Yeah, the oh, unleash the hands. The yeah. unleash the hands won't really be that great of an effect. I think the arcane golem is the card to pick here. Well, that's what you think. But then, when you have a board full of doggies, oh man, <laughs> more unleashing, I guess. This is kind of interesting because you gave your uh, your mage opponent a worthless zero seven, so you, yep. get, you get an extra doggy. That's true. And so there's the body there, and uh, unless the mage isn't really, unless the mage gets something like an Argus to make it relevant again, a Frost Nova, which <laughs> doesn't really do anything again. This, this is this is a bit painful to watch. I mean, you look at the hand; it's pretty cool. Then, yeah, you kind of anticipate a play like you just saw. Alright, well he's gonna give it a, a 0-7 body, so it's strictly a slightly worse version of the Warden. Significantly worse, considering that most of the creatures in the Hunter decks have one toughness, despite the one on the board being one of the few mm -hmm. exceptions to that. And uh, now with the Eagle Horde bow, they should be able to burst right through the, the uh, Doomsayer taunt. Yeah, pretty easy play. Yeah. So right now with the Leper Gnome, it's forcing the Mage to uh, use a ping ability. And uh, certainly we'll see a trade between the Sunfury Protector and Huffer. Oh, it does draw uh, 
a, a second Sun Fury Protector as well. I believe this is the turn when you uh, develop your Ice Block. Yeah, that is a pull. Yeah, yeah, I don't really see any other way to do it. So, finally starting to be able to get it. And 20 health is not too bad, much better than their yeah. turn 5 the last game. The Ice Block is still in the hand. I've experienced this bug. Yeah, you can see that the opponent sees the, uh, the secret up. So the secret was in fact cast, even though it does display in the hand. Uh, you can't cast it again, so it's just like a, a fake copy of the card mm -hmm. in your hand right now. Just a reminder, I yeah. guess. So a Leper Known drop doesn't really... Well, does he want to push out the Arcane Golem, or does he want to uh, put out like the Leper Gnome and set up something else? Uh, you don't really want to give them mana, but... Yeah, I think the Arcane Golem is the best play. And then it's like this weird counterintuitive thing where it's like vaporize and they just completely destroy it. That's um, that's about as optimistic as uh, you can get, <laughs> I think. Uh, the thing is, even if it was vaporized, you'd, you'd get another durability on your weapon. Oh, that's true, yeah. It actually helps in your benefit. Okay, so he does, he does not want to give the uh, mage... Uh, extra mana. Yeah. yeah. No need to give it to you to survive. Yeah, it's certainly one of those cards that's only going to get in one attack. It's going to get frozen or killed immediately. A mountain giant, a turn. Well, he still can play Sylvanas, but. Yeah, he's out of range of both giants. That really sucks. That stings. Yeah. You really have to just drop what you can, and this turn, that's Sylvanas. The, yeah, Sylvanas. And uh, next turn, you can play the mountain giant. Mm -hmm. Or actually, based off it, you can definitely play Molten Giant and Taunt, and Double Taunt stuff. Well, you might be able to play both Giants if you take enough damage, but... Um, I don't know, yeah. I feel if you play the Molten, you really just want to give a Taunt. I have no time for games. Yeah, I think the decisions here are pretty clear. Certainly. Turn number six. For Doggy House. If we see a flare draw, I mean, it's going to be brutal, but you have to keep in mind that, um, you know, normally you'd use flare to beat up the other hunters, mm -hmm. but in this matchup, because the decks are exclusive, they know they're not running into other hunters, and, um, you know, how can you really anticipate a mage? So while this deck normally runs flare, I would bet that this variation does not. Yeah, and uh, the other two classes, pa well, Paladin does run secrets, but not the kind of Paladin they've seen. And Warlock, it's kind of, there's no real stealth to use anymore with unless Blood Imp. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, it's uh, it's pretty safe to not to assume it won't be needed. So here, what I would expect is uh, an attack into the Arcane Golem, Ping Sylvanas to take the Leper Gnome, followed by Molten Giant for free and Taunt. And that is four mana, so you can drop the Acolyte as well. Sure. And do you give the Acolyte taunt? Um, or do you give the... Yeah, you probably should. Uh, the thing is, it, whichever one of those two you give taunt is going to get killed by the weapon. I like uh, I like giving the Leper Gnome taunt as the Acolyte is more valuable for killing the uh, the other charges. Ah, yes. yes. Anything that drops out, if Abusive Sergeant, etc. Yeah. I think it's a, definitely a clever play, I think so. Or are they going to use it? No. No, they they know what to do. Definitely. Oh, go for face. And try to see if they can draw. Mm -hmm. And now they draw a polymorph. Instead. Yeah, but they give a durability of the weapon. It's true, but if you give the two, these two minions taunt... I guess they wanted more li uh, defense line. Mm -hmm. They even have enough uh, room to put a Frost Nova on stuff. Yeah, I think Frost Nova is fine. Just use whatever you can. All right. And now uh, the board's pretty reasonably developed for the mage. You can put out some really sick damage next turn. Uh, well, we have the double ducky. Oh. <laughs> but you know, you only can use really one effectively. The other one, you're just getting one extra dog. You... Yeah, well, you use one, you attack Trade it with it all. And yeah. then... uh, right now, you can get him to one just by using the uh, kill command and ping after an unleash. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you can't really do eight damage. That's, that's the issue. If you do all the doggies twice, you can kill that. And then the weapon kills a Sylvanas. And that just, just kind of sucks, actually. 
Yeah, then you lose potentially like the leopard gnome, which you want to keep around. This is one of those really tough situations where if you could just deal one extra damage, you'd be so much better off. All right, well, let's listen into the team and see what they have to say. Oh, you certainly don't want to kill Command before the Unleash. That no. could have been <laughs> uh, could have been disastrous. And uh, I guess oh, they want to deal with the Sylvanas. A uh, very interesting order of attacks. And uh, I guess set up the explosive trap. So the, the two mana, or sorry, the two health from the Savannahs, why are they so... Oh, the, um, yeah, the explosive trap. Pretty good play, pretty clever. Uh, I think as the mage, you really have to try to deal with this. You can't continue to fall behind. Do you still try to snipe, grab something from them, like the Leopard Gnome? with the Sylvanas steel, so that way you don't lose health, or do you... Yeah, you certainly yeah. grab the Leopard Gnome. Uh, most likely this play is to encourage a uh, Explosive Trap, but you can steal the Leopard Gnome after Explosive Trap by having the Explosive kill off the Sylvanas. So one play is to uh, essentially to sacrifice the Molten Giant into the arcane golem and then attack with sylvanas but that is anticipating that it is explosive and trap. not a misdirection right so if it is a misdirection you'd want to attack with the acolyte no, uh, i wow. certainly wouldn't do that Ooh, okay well they're gonna instead draw a card and it's a second ice block it's a good card to draw but i fear that you just don't have enough damage right now yeah and now they're gonna lose uh Take the arcane I, golem to try I to think, do some damage. Yeah, I think the best play was to attack with the 2 3 in case of mystery. But uh, Sylvanas is alright, I suppose. They can also drop a, like a mountain giant or Ragnaros. Yeah, Ragnaros it is. They're in a pretty decent spot, wow. it turns out. Yeah, actually, because they have a second ice block, this sets up a, a win unless, unless there's flare. a flare. <laughs> oh man! And just like that, liquid value able to swing around the game. Because uh, th I don't think they have any answer. Well, they can kill the uh, all the all the creatures minus Rag, and One. they can just play like a silence. So um, you know, it's it's a target. And from their perspective, they might be fine. Kind of, maybe. Mm, that's still but assuming that still second ice block. I believe guarantees the win. Yeah, it, it does because they have two turns no matter what. Actually, yes. do this. so they can trade out everything, proc ice block, and if the mage can't follow up and kill, then that's it. But they have no answers left. Yeah, you have to attack with the weapon first because um, if if your if your opponent has ice block triggered, uh, well, I guess you just don't want to no, attack a creature. Yeah. I was thinking of the true silver, the gain life thing, but uh, yeah, that's not the case here. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. So uh, yeah, just I mean, actually, the order of this doesn't really matter. I think. Oh, that is certainly. Not I think they're setting up more targets for Ragnaros as opposed to before. Uh, yeah, but you don't trigger ice block. Oh wow! Oh no! That face palm. Doggy house. That face oh, palm. No. Very descriptive of that play. <laughs> I still thought they would proc it, but instead they tried to. They didn't really accomplish what they wanted. Oh no! No, no I think they know it's over now because they just <laughs> they lost. It's, um. Oh man. Yeah, there's nothing really they can do about it. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> this is. <laughs> Well, that was a team fail there. I mean, when you put four heads together, sometimes they clash, I suppose. Oh, yeah, and, uh, you know, the masses sometimes don't come up with the best idea. See any form on the internet. Yeah. Well, the 1-1 one, one took it like a champ. Well, I guess that went according to plan-ish, but they proc the ice block, and it won't really matter. I guess the only thing to do is to wow, do what the a, noble what thing. An unlikely win. Yeah. Sudoku.
Now we know that it wouldn't have mattered, but uh, at least in Doggy House, psychologically, it's like they threw away the game. It should have mattered if 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 I was playing on Liquid Values team, I would not play that X Rice one. Right? Yeah. I'd be like, yeah, yeah. you guys you threw the game it up and gave it back it. to us. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Liquid Values coming back into the series 1-2, and, well, they're making it interesting. Yeah, quite surprised to see a mistake at this stage in the game, but, um, yeah, certainly a costly one as they see it, but essentially it didn't really make any difference. So now it's down to Warrior or Priest for Doggy House. Do you have any recommendations? Well... It's pretty difficult. I mean, you're working with uh, an old techie mage, and uh, they made it work, I guess. Uh, <laughs> one way or another. Yeah, it's pretty hard to see. Uh, the priest is traditionally good against the mage, but in this case, it's kind of hard to tell, because sometimes with the giants with the freezes, you get on a clock that you can't outheal. So, uh, I don't know, maybe the warrior is a bit more aggressive and maybe it's what they need. All right, we'll find out right after this break when we come back gainer four between Liquid Value and Team Doggy House. See you after the break for more Fight Nights. Street Fighter returns to Fight Nights, February the 24th, only on ESGN TV. Watch Fight Night, because people who don't are told... <laughs> are you able to just like bleep that out? Yeah. Don't uh, okay. <laughs> the SGN TV. Just watch. No matter how they spin it, I'm here to win it. The number one rule of fight night, I am fight night. Oh! 